Hey guys, what's going on? Megan here. Your ancestor, in fact, several of your ancestors, were alpha males. Case closed. And I'm going to prove to you and show you exactly why that is. I'm also going to explain to you how that relates to you today in this day and age. In fact, this is the post that prompted this video. I made that two months ago and it sparked some controversy in the comments. So pause the video, read it real fast so I don't have to explain the whole story again. By the way, this is another episode of Sex Talk Saturday where we talk about everything related to masculinity and sex and things like that. So back to the topic of the video. First, let's get one thing straight, guys. What is an alpha male? Because society has made this word so toxic and misrepresented this word so much to the point where now even saying the word alpha is seen as a bad thing, right? All the social justice warriors, all the fucking anti manist all the lame motherfuckers have corrupted the meaning of what it is to be an alpha. Guys, an alpha male is simply the most valuable person in the tribe. That's all it is. The most valuable person in the group in terms of helping the tribe, leading the tribe, providing for the tribe. Obviously, there's, there's levels to the shit. It's not like there's just one guy doing it. There's a bunch of guys doing it. But in every society that animals and humans have organized themselves in, you're always going to see a handful of guys at the top, the alpha males, and they're there for a reason. They're there because they provide leadership, protection, and food to the group. Doesn't matter if it's an animal, it doesn't matter if it's humans. If you study every human society that's ever existed, and if you study every social animal that has a hierarchy, you'll notice that the alpha males have three things in common. Number one, to help the tribe or the group or whatever find food, right? So they protect the group from starvation. Number two, they protect the group from predators and number three they protect the group from rival males because obviously you guys know in human and every other species where there's competition for mates a lot of times when the rival males take over they kill the kids so that they can reproduce with the females so in every single group where there's an alpha male you'll notice this pattern protects the group from starvation protects the group from predators and protects the group from rival males which is why in the societies the alpha males of value, right? They're not bullies. Alpha males are not supposed to be bullies. They're not supposed to be, oh, look, I'm better than everybody. No, it's not a fucking alpha male. An alpha is simply a leader, someone who's valuable, and someone who provides those two things. Obviously, today is relative, right? For example, when I when something is wrong in the apartment and the maintenance man comes in, he's the fucking alpha. I shut the fuck up and I listen to everything he has to say. If I'm going to the doctor, the doctor's the alpha male. I shut the fuck up and I listen to everything he has to say. When I'm in school, the alpha male is the professor, right? Today, nothing has changed. The person in the group or in the room who is the most valuable, who has the information, able to solve the problem, is the alpha male. So when I tell men to strive to become leaders, to strive to become alpha males, which is literally what Team 3 Alpha is all about, it's all about maximizing your productivity, maximizing your skill, knowing your strengths, increasing your value so that wherever you go, you provide value, especially if it's your niche, right? It doesn't have to be a guy. It could be a female. It could be an alpha female, right? Back to the doctor example, sometimes it's a lady. When she walks in, I shut up, I sit down, and I listen to everything she has to say, right? So striving to become an alpha male, striving to become an alpha female, striving to become the most valuable person in your niche, in your group, or whatever, is a good thing. It's something that everyone should aspire to be. But because of this sensitive-ass society we live in, people were getting offended that some of their ancestors were alpha males. Think about how far we've fallen that it's a bad thing to know that you have a great, 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 whatever grandfather that was a complete beast. That was the most valuable person in his niche. Now, how do we know that one or several of your ancestors were alpha males? Obviously, even the science agrees with this. You guys know there was a huge bottleneck throughout history where only very few men were able to pass on their genes, right? There were very few men were able to contribute to overall human diversity as far as why DNA goes. And you can see the dip here. At one point, it was so bad that the ratio was 17 to 1. Think about it. That means for every 17 women that reproduced, only one. One man was passing on his genes for every 17 women, which is insane, right? And different parts of the world and different regions, the ratio changed. It went as low as 2 to 1, sometimes 3 to 1, 4 to 1. But almost in every society you look at, there are periods of time where most men die childless relative to women. So even though we all have a father and a mother in our, in our ancestry and shit, overall as a race, right, as the human race, more females were able to donate their DNA to the human race compared to men. And the reason is simple, guys. Who were these few men? Who were these few men who were able to clap cheeks while everybody else couldn't? Who were these few men who were able to pass on their genes when everybody couldn't? Very simple. In every major society, 
that humans have lived in, from hunters and gatherers, agriculturists, pastoralists, there were only three ways you could pass on your genes, right? So it doesn't matter where your ancestors came from. It doesn't matter if you're in Africa, Asia, America, it doesn't matter, right? Your ancestors lived in one of those three societies. And in those societies, there was only three ways to pass on your genes. Number one, you had societies where the female chooses, right? Where, you know, women had full rights and the ability to just choose whoever their mates were. You had societies where the father chose or the family, if the father's dad, then it's the cousins or the brothers or the mom, whatever, right? So you have societies where the, the father chooses who he's going to marry his daughter to. So arranged marriages. And obviously, unfortunately, you have societies where the men just took the women by force, right? So these were the three main ways men were able to pass on their genes throughout history for hundreds of thousands of years. Either the female chose the guy, the father of the woman chose the guy, or the guy took the woman by force. And sure enough, in all of those societies, only the men at the top of the hierarchy, right? Doesn't have to be number one, could be number one, number two, number three, whatever. Only the men at the top of the hierarchy were the ones passing on their genes. So when the women were choosing, they picked the guys at the top, which I'm gonna explain why in a minute. When the fathers were choosing, again, most of the time, they were marrying their women to a competent man. Who the fuck wants to marry his daughter to some lame ass dude who's not gonna be able to protect her or protect her from predators and, and other men and the things that I mentioned earlier? And, and even in the societies where the men stole the women by force, guess what? They had to take those women from other men, right? So they had to be competent. They had to be strong, right? Or they had to be great warriors. So no matter how you look at it, the only reason your bum ass is here today is because a bunch of men in your ancestry were valuable enough, competent enough, or strong enough to reach the top of the hierarchy and pass on their genes. A perfect example of this is here, right? So imagine a village where you have two groups of men at the top. Right? Just imagine there's only 10 men in the village, right? At the top, you have five alpha males. They're very valuable, good warriors. Depending on the society, you know, it's not every society uh, wants a warrior, but let's say society or farmers or whatever. It doesn't matter, right? Imagine you have the top guys at the top, five guys at the top who are really good at what they do. Alpha males, sigma males, leaders, warriors, you name it, right? And the other five men in the village are a bunch of Jerry's. I had to pick Jerry because if you guys watch Rick and Morty, he's like the fucking epitome of weakness, Right, so imagine a village of 10 men, five warriors, and five weaklings, right? So total of 10. Now let's imagine there's also 10 women in that same village. So the ratio is perfect, right? One to one, 10 men, 10 women. Who the fuck do you think is gonna pass on their genes? Let's pretend we're in society one, right? What the women choose. Who do you think the women are gonna choose? Now, obviously there's some outliers. There's probably a, a woman who's into, you know, Jerry motherfuckers, right? But 90% of the time, overwhelmingly, the women are going to choose the guys at the top, right? So these top five guys are going to clap cheeks, right? And keep in mind, back then, women didn't mind sharing a guy with other women. So you will have 10 women sharing five men, right? Maybe this guy might have two, this guy might have three, this guy might have four, or maybe, you know, this guy might have two. It doesn't matter, right? But most of the women will hook up with the guys up there. Why? Because, again, they need a guy to protect them. They need a guy to protect them from other males. They need a guy that's going to fight off the predators. There's a reason why men are bigger than women, right? It's not by coincidence. It's from sexual selection. Women choosing the bigger, stronger men. But meanwhile, at the bottom, fewer and fewer of these Jerry motherfuckers are going to pass on their genes. Let's imagine we're in a second type of society where men, uh, where fathers are marrying their daughters off. Who the fuck do you think? Which one of these fathers is going to marry his daughter to a Jerry motherfucker knowing all of the threats that were out there at the time? Not to mention you also had to pay the dowry, right? So the guy had to have enough money to be able to, you know, pay for the bride. So he had to be, once again, competent enough, productive enough to even be able to afford the dowry. Or let's pick society number three where the men were taking the women by force. Who the fuck do you think is going to have the most women? The Jerry motherfuckers are going to take the women from these guys? See? So any way you look at it, no matter what the society was, if you are here today, it means your ancestor was a complete beast. That's the only way he was going to be able to consistently pass on his genes. Same thing with his son and his son and his son after him all the way down to your bum ass today. So that's why I always tell you guys, take pride. I don't care where you're from. Be proud of your ancestry. Be proud of the shit that your ancestors had to survive. And most importantly, do something with the genes that passed on to you, right? I had a guy ask me several times, hey, Megan, do you think some people are just born average and don't have, you know, any talents or any genetic gifts? My answer is, is very rare. Unless you have some fucked up mutations, some, some crazy disease where you're unproductive as shit, 
almost everyone has something that their ancestors passed down to. I don't care if it's cognitive abilities, high IQ, uh, good at sports, good at strength, good at planning, good at leadership, community. I don't care what it is. Everyone has something that makes them stand out because, once again, your ancestor passed on those genes. You know, of course, you also had some weak people in your lineage, but the odds are overwhelmingly on the side of the of the competent male. Remember, humans have been around for over 300,000 years as homo sapiens, of course, and we've been around even longer if you go back to the archaic species. So you can't tell me that after millions of years, after hundreds of thousands of years, you do not have some kind of genetic advantage. You just gotta look. You know, everyone is different. Like I said earlier, right? You could be good at you could be good at things that, you know, you you probably looking in the wrong place, right? Some of you guys, everyone wants to be in sports. Everyone wants to be a fucking bodybuilder. There are so many things that you are gifted at that you're probably not looking for. I don't care if it's music. I don't care if it's art. I don't care if it's intelligence. I don't care what it is. Constantly quiz yourself. Constantly study yourself so you can find out where your strengths are, find out where your weaknesses are, so that you can position yourself. To take advantage of those genes that your ancestor passed on to you. Alright guys, so I hope this video helps. Stop being a lazy piece of shit. Stop being a fucking coward. Stop making excuses for everything. Stop making excuses for your failures. Pick yourself up. Find out what you're good at. Remember Team 3D, right? That means discipline direction. Meaning find what you're good at. Create a daily routine that makes you a complete beast at what you're good at. And then develop a vision that allows you to not just be the best at what you do or the best at what you enjoy. But... That allows you to provide value to those around you, to your friends, to your family, to your industry. Doesn't matter what it is, right? Make your ancestors proud. All right, guys, I'm out of here. See you in the comment section. Oh, and don't forget to join the Reddit. All right, guys, don't forget to like or share the video, subscribe and hit the bell, and buy my HSP Nucleus of a Low Training Program. It's the ultimate program for maximum muscle growth. It includes full body workout splits, bro splits, push pull, home workouts, you name it. Also comes with a complete guide for macros, nutrition, fat loss, muscle growth, hormones, including a meal plan. It's pretty much all my 16 years of experience condensed into one fucking book. You're also going to get free copies of any future edition. So visit team3dalpha.com and you can use the 40% off coupon code Nicholas of Lord. Or you could just buy the shit at full price. Alright guys, I'm out of here.